Good morning, welcome to Utox Directory. How are we feeling this morning? What's going on in your life? I hope that as we join together in worship, you find that you can meet with God through this service. All those who are lonely or grieving, rejoicing or full of wondering, draw close to the God of healing and wholeness who meets you here today. Our first hymn is Love Divine or Love's Excelling. God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
we have a time of confession. God is longing to forgive us for the mess we make in our lives. So come close now. We are so often afraid that we miss the moment to see your face in those around us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are so often ignorant of our own need and we miss the need of others. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are sometimes too grown up for our own good and miss the wonder of this world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from haemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her haemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all round to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him, and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this, at this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When Jesus returned from his time in Gerasa, where he had healed the man possessed by demons, there was a large crowd waiting for him. One of these people was a synagogue leader named Jairus. Because so much opposition had arisen from within organised Judaism, it must have required both courage and humility on his part to make the approach. Jairus had known the joy of having his daughter with him for 12 years, but now she was close to death. And he came to Jesus desperate because he knew that there was nothing anyone could do to save her. 
In Jairus, therefore, we see a beautiful image of faith and humility. This great spiritual leader and highly respected member of the community kneeled down before Jesus and begged him to come to his home. Another person who was awaiting for Jesus was a woman. We're not given her name. In contrast to the 12 years of joy that prefaced Jairus' encounter with Jesus, this woman had known 12 years of misery, for she had experienced constant menstrual bleeding in this time. This had dire consequences for her. In addition to the physical discomfort, this ailment made her ceremonially unclean. This meant that she became an outcast in society because according to Levitical law, a woman with her problems was considered ritually unclean. She was therefore denied access to worship or to fellowship. In essence, this meant that she was denied access to God. She was financially destitute because she'd spent everything on doctors, but to no avail. She too was desperate. The woman had heard about Jesus and how when he touched people or when people touched him, they were healed. She was nevertheless a bit concerned. She was so embarrassed about her ailment that she did not want to go public with it. So she decided to touch Jesus secretly. She thought that it would be sufficient if she just touched one of the tassels of his robe. And the minute she touched the tassel, she was healed and she knew it. She now wanted to slink away secretly. The woman's reasons for not openly coming to Jesus seemed valid. According to the Levitical law, if she touched Jesus, she would also make him ritually unclean. But Jesus forced her to come into the open because he had important lessons to teach both the woman and the crowd. To begin with, this public confession was for her sake. It was an opportunity for her to confess Christ and glorify God. Had she stolen away in the crowd, she would have not met Jesus personally or heard his words of assurance and comfort. She seems to have had a rather magical idea that a touch of his garment was all that was needed to restore her to health. And this it did. But Jesus wanted to lead her to a faith which rested on a personal acquaintance and an open confession of him. Then she could go with a deeper peace than that which mere recovery of health could bring. It's amazing how many people receive great blessings from God. Some receive miraculous healings like this woman, but they never really accept Jesus personally and therefore never receive his gift of enduring faith. Jesus wanted the woman to be able to stand firm no matter what happened to her in the future. Jesus therefore insisted that she have a personal encounter with him and so receive a deep and significant faith. The crowd also needed to learn a lesson. You can be part of the crowd and never get any blessings from being near Jesus. It's one thing to press him and another thing to touch him. Jesus, uh, Jairus knew that Jesus could save his child. He had faith, but his faith was tested. While Jesus was still speaking to the woman, a messenger came from Jairus' home with the news that his daughter had died. Jesus overheard and spoke words of comfort to him. We read in verse 36, when Jesus heard this, he told Jairus, Don't worry, have faith and your daughter will get well. The scene when they arrived at Jairus' home must have been depressing. One can assume that the professional mourners would have arrived and the friends and neighbours would have also gathered around. Jesus stilled the people like he did the storm and said, The child is not dead, she's just asleep. They laughed at him because they knew that the child was dead. Jesus entered the house of all but a save a chosen few. He took the girl by the hand and said, Child, get up. 
or as we heard in Mark's Gospel, the Aramaic words, Talitha, come, little girl, arise. These are the words that her mother would have used each morning to waken her daughter. The tenderness of this moment cannot be captured using words. But she came back to life and got up. The incident ends with Jesus exhorting the parents not to spread the good news of what had happened. Jesus didn't want to attract a large following of curious onlookers who were only seeking to get what they wanted out of him. Now, there are many painful things that can happen to us because we live in an imperfect world where the majority of people choose to reject Jesus Christ and his law of love. Satan is also active. The result? Suffering. It's a fact of life. Without faith, we will become easily discouraged. The only thing that can lift us up and give us hope is an abiding sense of Christ's love, his wisdom and his care for us. So when the tests come and with God's help our faith endures, we feel lifted up and encouraged. The theologian Ryle said, Faith can sit still and wait for better times. Faith can see light even in the darkest hour and a needs be for the heaviest trial. Faith can sing songs in the night, in any condition. What songs are you singing in the night? And to finish, the prophet Isaiah writes, You, Lord, give perfect peace to those who keep their purpose firm and put their trust in you. So trust in the Lord forever. And like Jairus' daughter and the woman, he will always protect you. Amen. Let us pray. We bring our prayers before you today. Church buildings are often surrounded by areas of grass. Help us to care for this environment in a way which shows respect for your creation. Guide us as we explore ways of caring for our environment as we worship you and continue our activities in church. Across the world, encourage every nation to work towards protecting their local environment. Within Utoxita, we ask you to be with all families Encourage us all to continue to marvel at your creation around us. Help us to reflect on our actions as they protect our surroundings. We bring before you today those having to wait for surgery due to the pressure being put on the health service dealing with coronavirus. We remember the families of those who have had a family member or friend join you in eternity. We also remember those facing an anniversary of a relative or friend's death. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. As we receive communion, we do so on behalf of all of you. We do so in the expectation of the day when, that, when we can receive communion together. And please, Lord, may that day be soon. And as we do so, I invite you to receive a spiritual communion with Jesus, our Lord. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of contact and wholeness, of joy and despair, hold you in peace and fullness of life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Jesus. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus.